Hi, I am Magdalena Baczewska. In today's episode of Back at Home, we continue discussing young Frédéric Chopin, his life before he turned 18. I will tell you today about Chopin's composition teacher, Josef Elsner, uh, his first duties as a church organist, his constantly declining health, uh, the health of his young sister, Emilia, which led to a premature death at age 14. And as always, you will hear music. Today, we will talk about the Nocturne of the 72, number one in E minor. As you may remember from the previous episode, Chopin as a 14 and 15 year old spent time in the countryside of Chafarnia in the Mazovia region. As a 16 year old, he was sent together with his family to Dushniki Zdruy, Bad Reinels, it was the name of the town in German, and the town was at the time outside of Poland. Chopin's mom, Justyna, made an executive decision following the doctor's advice to take the family to a spa town where together with other patients, mostly suffering from tuberculosis, uh, Frederick and his sisters could take waters and promenades around the beautiful parks of Dushniki Zdruy. We know that Chopin was unable to practice in Dushniki Zdruy for the lack of an appropriate instrument. He did, however, give a recital, a charity concert uh, organized um, after a death of one of the patients who orphaned his children. Chopin was very moved by it and decided to help and put his talent to work. Following Chopin's death, there were multiple attempts at romanticizing and idealizing his stay in Dushniki Struy. However, in the Walker biography of Chopin, we read an opinion of a medical scholar who says that the trip was simply an expensive fiasco for the family. After the summer in Dushniki Zdruy, Chopin took on a role of a church organist in Warsaw's Krakowskie Przedmieście. We can only imagine the young boy studying and performing the fugues of all the masters, one of them surely being Johann Sebastian Bach, as well as learning to improvise on the organ. At the same time, Chopin also enrolls in the Warsaw High School, where outside of academic subjects and languages, he will be learning composition, counterpoint and orchestration with Josef Elsner. Josef Elsner was a very interesting personality. His first vocation was that of priesthood, which he abandoned for the study of medicine, only later to become a composer, performer and an administrator. He was the director of the Warsaw Opera and the leader of the high school in which Chopin studied. And as much as the presence of Wojciech Żywny in Chopin's life to further his piano studies, the presence of Józef Elsner really sent Chopin on his way as a composer. Alan Walker writes, Elsner understood that education means to lead forth. And he did indeed lead his students forth in their quest to discover not only the world around them, but also the world within them. Elsner was known to say, it is a bad master who is not surpassed by his pupil. He certainly allowed Chopin to spread his wings and not only did the young boy surpass him, but was able to develop his own individual style under the tutelage of Elsner. We know that Elsner will later use the word genius when describing the young composer. And it is perhaps his greatest gift to Chopin to have allowed him to thrive and flourish without imposing his own style on him. 
speaking of Elsner's style, I will make sure to link a performance of his sonata in the description of the video below. Chopin had three sisters. I mentioned before Ludwika, his older sister with whom he adored to play the piano as a young boy. His younger sisters were Isabella, who lived a long life and became a guardian of the Chopin estate, and Emilia, who died at the very tender age of 14 of tuberculosis. Emilia was said to have been a very talented writer. Already as a child, she and little Frederick organized a make-believe society for literature and entertainment, writing poems and plays for their parents. Her death very deeply affected Frédéric Chopin and it is around that time that he wrote The Nocturne, which you will hear today. We know that outside of his intensive studies with Josef Elsner, Chopin always looked for inspiration from the outside. We know that he spent quite a bit of time in a music shop in Warsaw, browsing through different scores which would come from various parts of Europe. It is possible, Alan Walker says, that it is then that he encountered for the first time the nocturnes of John Field, an Irish composer he will meet in Paris later on. John Field is credited with having invented a new genre of piano music, the nocturne. The nocturne, as the word itself suggests, has to do with things nocturnal, things of the evening, things of the night. It is a subgenre of what we know as character pieces. Character pieces were all the rage in the 19th century. They are essentially short works for the piano mostly, instrumental works without words, evoking one single mood and usually carries a very evocative title. Schumann would call his pieces in a very descriptive way, such as a child falling asleep, but Chopin resorted to short titles such as a nocturne to describe the feelings one experiences in the evening or at night. Throughout his life, Chopin will continue writing nocturnes, evoking a wide range of feelings and emotions one might experience at night or in the evening. Today we will focus on Nocturne in E minor, Opus 72, number 1. It was written just around the time that the family would lose their beloved Emilia.
let's talk about the music in this beautiful nocturne. Chopin starts with what one might call a typical arpeggiated left hand. Arpeggio is nothing more than an unfolded chord. This would have been a blocked chord, and here it is unfolded, arpeggiated. The Italian word arpeggio comes from the word arpa, the harp, hence this beautiful unfolded chord. Now, Chopin could have simply stayed on that chord, but what he does is add this very painful step here between C and B. And that step, that minor second, is going to persist throughout, adding that real grain of sorrow to the music. You see, when you think about the D-flat major nocturne, for example, I'll make sure to link it in the description, all you have is a very calming arpeggio with no dissonant notes in it. However, here, that makes all the difference. So once he introduces this for one measure, and sweetness. We know Chopin never missed an opportunity to hear opera and was a great admirer of beautiful singing, the bel canto style. And here he translates it directly into the right hand, asking for all the nuances that the human voice would be able to execute for the right hand to make on the piano. In this particular nocturne, you will notice a lot of duetting, as though two singers were joining forces. And we see that already in measure four. What I have found to be very important in playing these duet-like nocturnes is to make sure not to ignore the second voice. We are often taught to really emphasize the top voice. However, in this case, I believe two voices, both of them are of equal importance, especially here. It is the alto, the second to the highest voice that has the more interesting, the more uh, tension-filled material. It's very important to pay good attention to it. Now we will hear the main melody one more time and you will notice that similarly to the mazurka of the 17 in number 4, Chopin never really presents the main melody in the same way twice. He's always varying it in some way. So here the second time you hear the melody, it comes in octaves. not just more interesting, but more expressive. As, as I mentioned in the first episode, Chopin's own playing was very delicate and filled with nuance. He never played loudly, and we know that he uh, really despised the forceful kind of playing. However, that should not be mistaken for a lack of emotion in his uh, music. In fact, this nocturne, um, I think you will all agree, that the emotional range is truly huge. Continuing the melody instead of what we heard the first time, Chopin is improvising. And now for a moment, Chopin allows us to smile. relief that we may get emotionally from this passage, 
The craft here of this 18 year old boy is truly exquisite. Uh, he is a very careful student and observer of counterpoint. Counterpoint is an art of writing in multiple parts or multiple voices where everything becomes melody. There is no hierarchy of the important melody and unimportant accompaniment. See, everything is important here. And uh, we know that Josef Elsner was teaching the counterpoint to Chopin and the counterpuntal writing here is truly exquisite where every voice becomes a melody. And even the left hand, which mostly serves as an accompaniment, here turns into a melody. Just listen. which is a very important compositional tool in creating dramatic tension. In this passage, uh, Chopin is rising chromatically and that as a symbol often meant yearning and struggle. In contrast to the main melody in minor mode is the beautiful sighing, perhaps languishing of the thirds here in major. to return to the yearning of the main melody, which we hear right now. Again, Chopin is improvising, adding embellishment. I think we can all hear the rising despair and anxiety in this music which is expressed here through the fast notes. What is remarkable is that Chopin, unlike other virtuosos of the time, is not simply trying to show off the speed with which he can uh, play the piano, but each embellishment carries a deep, profound meaning and adds to the overall expression of the music. What you will hear next is young Chopin masterfully playing with the light and the shadow, the kind of chiaroscuro, uh, a term borrowed from painting. We know that the great German poet Heinrich Heine referred once to Chopin as the Raphael of the piano, referring to his endless uh, colors um, that he's able to produce through his music. So listen to this. to hear the main melody at its most desperate. Octaves.
dissonant. A reminder of the pain and loss. This helps you understand a little bit better the world in which young Frédéric Chopin was coming of age, the world surrounding him, but also his inner world, which as you can hear from his music, was already so rich. All this happened before the composer turned 18 and before he embarked on his first international performances. It has been a great pleasure to share all this information and especially the music with you. As always, I invite you to subscribe to my channel where you will find many more videos on the Back at Home playlist. For now, stay well and take care. This program is made with the support of the Culture, Science and Education Grant from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland.